Planet Hollywood Radio, this is the sound of your planet. We've talked earlier and you seem like a nice guy, but you always play the bad guy. Do you like playing the bad guy or why are you always the bad guy? Well, to answer the first question uh, regarding this perception of the bad guy, um, I think my feeling about that is, and I think I'm going to quote um, some dialogue from a film that I have a great affection for. It's called Apocalypse Now. There's an interesting scene in the film where the general uh, says to Captain Willard, he says that he believes that every human being, there's a conflict within every human being between the rational and the irrational. And um, it's very human. And I think for me, uh, I've been asked by writers, people in you know, creative positions, powerful positions, to kind of explore the tension between the two that I feel that all human beings have to wrestle with, you know. With the bad side. Yeah, you're making choices, the choices that we make. Because, you know, I think for me it's not black and white. I think in life there's a lot of gray, a lot of gray area, you know. And, and sometimes those who wear the badge, you know, the, the badge are, that are supposed to, you know, represent you know, ideally, this idea of, you know, protecting and serving a particular morality of a society to keep the society intact, don't always, you know, live up to the ideal. You know, they make mistakes. They sometimes do things that, for some, are considered unscrupulous. And then there are people that, you know, by the out, you know, from the perception of the outward appearance, may appear to be nefarious or you know, maybe done things in their lives that they're not proud of, but they have great relationships with their family, with their kids. They love their kids. So they have qualities within themselves in the way that they treat others. That yeah, Like in the mafia, it's the best uh, example, yeah, no? Yeah, you know, so I think that for me, I think the key element for me when I approach the work, the craft, the character, it's very important for me, and what's key for me is to remove this idea of judgment There's no judgment because whether it's the good guy, the bad guy, or whether you're living in the gray area, you're a human being, male, female. It doesn't matter what tribe you come from, what your orientation is. You're human. If, if I cut you or you cut me, we bleed the same color, right? Mm -hmm. So I think in that sense, I try to find the humanity within the character, some element of humanity to authenticate the experience so then when people watch this they don't feel like they're watching something that's a caricature or something that's unreal something that on a certain level when they've been angry at maybe their boss so they can relate and they can root for you right i think in a sense yeah there's a sense they project onto me aspects of themselves in their frustration because i think a lot of the characters, or some of the characters I've been asked to portray, are dealing with frustration, extreme frustration. And sometimes we don't always work through that frustration in the most productive way. Mm -hmm. And it can come off, you know, and, it, and, and, and sometimes that's where I think the results of that can be, can ruin lives. Destructive, you can be destructive. destructive. Exactly, so, but, but for me at least, I would say that I, uh, I try. I don't judge the characters. I like. I find uh, pieces of humanity in them, and I, I try to make them as. I don't. I don't see them as monsters. I just see them as as. as, as human as, beings. As human beings. As human beings, and uh, you know, maybe you know, they have a particular affection for animals, or they have an affection for a child that they yeah. love. You know. So you don't impersonate like the typical Hollywood bad guy. You know, like in. In comics, yeah, you, you you represent a human being. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not so sure some of the people that are creating the mythologies and storytelling within Hollywood even understand necessarily the very intricate uh, psychologic dynamic of the human mind. Mm -hmm. It's very complicated, very complex, man. So to make a broad stroke in regard to human psyche, human characteristics, when you hear stories all the time, well. This man, we thought he was a good guy. He did a terrible thing. And hey, wait a minute, wasn't that person a police officer and he beat up that guy? That's not right. Mm -hmm. So we constantly see in our society elements 
of contradiction. Why do you think the people always cast you as the bad guy? It's possible. I'm not saying it's certain, but it may be, it may be derived from a situation in America many years ago where the African Americans were not allowed to um, participate creatively segregation in films uh, or they were allowed to participate but as slaves as servants and I think whether it was uh, society's uh, confusion or arrogance or lack of understanding um, fear I think that it was easy to it's it, I think it's easy or maybe it's yeah maybe it's easy to scapegoat a particular tribe of people when you don't understand don't understand the cultural experience or maybe you are frightened by things you don't understand um, and so you want to put it in the back you want to lock it up in a cage because you're afraid that maybe it I don't know there's some 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 quality there that 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 makes you uncomfortable because you haven't done enough investigation to find out who your brothers really are. So I guess the answer to your question specifically about why there's a tendency to cast Robert Lasardo as the bad guy, the nefarious character, I think it's probably uh, the tattoos point to something, you know, um, 20, 30 years ago. Um, it wasn't popular. Uh, it's become very popular. And, you know, 2014. We're now in 2014. Yeah. So if anybody would have told me in 1985 that tattoos would be popular and celebrated in the mainstream and to some extent glorified and, and beautiful pictorials with women and you know very handsome, attractive, mm -hmm. well-built men, I would have never believed that. Um, I think one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons that for me it's been a challenge in the way that I've communicated myself in the art form regarding body modification is that it's just simply this, it's fear. I think when people don't understand something, um, it's easier to dismiss it mm -hmm. and to lock it up in a box and categorize it rather than take the time to get to know, to get to understand it. It's kind of like if I don't know you that well and I don't come from a background, a situation where I come in contact with people from all walks of life, mm -hmm and I live in a box, my life is very limited, and I don't understand you, I may tend to dismiss you and label you, but if I've had a life experience where I've met many different people from all walks of life, I may be fascinated by something different and go, wow, what's that about? Can you explain that to me? Rather than label it, demonize it, or, you know, consign it to the island of misfits, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a thing. And I think to some extent Hollywood, until recently, I think has been concerned about what the ink mm -hmm. communicates, you know? So it's because of the fear of the unknown, right? I think that's a piece of it, yeah. Okay. I think it's a piece of it. Um, yeah, I think it's a big piece of it. Plus, in American, American culture and history, um, prior to this explosion and celebration of the tattoo culture, you know, the tattoo um, experience uh, and the art that comes from it, this amazing art that you see, prior to that, it was associate, associated with um, criminal element, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. gangsters, uh, convicts, Gangs. outlaws, outlaws, bikers. And so because I think of that, that um, experience, I'm not saying that's a bad experience, it's just a particular experience, but a lot of people associate or did associate tattoos with drug addiction. Uh, crime criminal element yeah basically and so we're kind of moving into a new experience slowly where it's becoming more acceptable mm -hmm. more accepted by the mainstream I wouldn't say it's gone mainstream I think it's just becoming more accepted in the mainstream and it's also been exploited quite a bit in the mainstream I didn't get tattooed because I had any uh, I didn't have a crystal ball okay. and no and had no way of knowing that this somehow would translate into something that, to some, from some people's point of view, has been extremely fortuitous for me. I just enjoy 
the experience of being tattooed and it's very spiritual for me, very okay. personal. It's a way to communicate, like in poetry, okay. but in physical form, feelings I have okay. about different things. Cheers. That was Robert Lozado about being a bad guy. <laughs>